Hello, Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your weekly spoiler-free guide to horror entertainment. I'm James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is review a horror movie from one of the various streaming services, spoiler-free. I also cover horror news, new releases of the week, and sometimes a video game or two. Scream Stream is available wherever podcasts are served, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. If you want to hear the original run of Scream Stream, which ran from 2014 to 2015, head over to patreon.com slash ScreamStream, and you can listen to those each week for free. Every week I do release a new old episode. And as always, this iteration of Scream Stream will be out every Monday. I do apologize because this episode is extremely late. Uh, I have been trying to change my recording schedule for a while now so that uh, I used to record on Sundays. And so that kind of left me with a couple days to, or at least, you know, between Friday and Saturday to watch a movie and then record Sunday. Uh, so now I do want to record every Wednesday so that a, I can get it up early to patrons and you can become a patron over at patreon.com slash scream stream. And also it kind of helps me out just being able to watch a movie and then better prepare for the show. So again, I do apologize that these episodes are late. Um, from this point on, you will get a new episode every Monday. So for this week, I was having a hard time trying to pick something to watch. Uh, I started watching a few different films and just wasn't feeling it. Uh, I went from like subspecies to uh, some other just off the wall film. But a friend of mine on Facebook tagged me in an article from... Business Insider, and the headline was, Netflix horror movie Veronica is scaring people into shutting it off halfway through watching. And as soon as I read that headline, I thought, I have to review this for ScreamStream. I just want to know for myself, is it really that scary? So according to the article, it says there's scary and then there's Veronica. Leave it to Twitter to create a torrential experience for the masses. The latest Netflix phenomena that's taken the world by storm is the horror flick Veronica. Apparently the movie is so intensely frightening that viewers can't even get through an entire screening of it. In fact, people have been live tweeting their reactions while watching the Spanish film. And it shows like some people who have tweeted that they couldn't watch the film and they turned it off halfway through and it's so scary and blah, blah, blah. And I thought I got to watch this movie. So I did. Uh, and let's go ahead and jump into this and get all the technical stuff out of, out of the way first, because then I want to focus on the story. And is it really that scary? So this was written by Fernando Navarro, Navarro and Paco Plaza. And if you know Paco Plaza, uh, he did, uh, the Wreck series, and he let's see, yeah, he directed Wreck to Wreck one, two, and three. Uh, he's just finished a film called Eye for an Eye, and he wrote another film called uh, Quarantine Two Terminal. This was, I think, this was the American version. I think he he uh, worked on that a little bit, uh, but anyway, his Wreck films were absolutely amazing. Those were scary films. Uh, so if you know Paco Plaza, you might enjoy this one. Uh, and it stars Sandra Escasina, Bruna Gonzalez, and Claudia Placer. Placer? Placer. I think it's Placer. So, for a brief plot synopsis, Madrid, 1991. A girl finds herself besieged by an evil supernatural force after she played Ouija with two classmates. And that's basically the entire story. Uh, this girl uh, and her friends on a solar eclipse went into sort of like the attic of their uh, Catholic school and brought out a Ouija board. And it doesn't look like, it didn't look like a typical Ouija board. It was, it was a little different. It was weird. Uh, and they started playing it and uh, Veronica kind of just freaked out and passed out and woke up in the nurse's office. And there's a couple of dialogue bits here that might have played into Ver the character of Veronica, but not as much as you thought they were going to. It kind of felt a little unrealized, but I, I, I'll get to that in a, little, a little later. So the acting was great. Uh, all of the kids in this film 
uh, Sandras Casina, Bruno Gonzalez, Claudia Placer, uh, Ivan Chavero. They played all the kids in the family. And they all did an excellent job. They were all believable. I know a couple of the kids, they've only done three films, this being their third. Uh, and uh, they did really good. I thoroughly enjoyed their performances. The character development was was great. Veronica, I felt like there was a lot of depth to her character. And they used the soundtrack for the film as an interesting tool to sort of build her character development and to give her depth so you kind of get a feel of what kind of person she is. So the film did have some really interesting characters um, and a lot of good development there. Cinematography was absolutely phenomenal. They had some camera movements in here that in themselves built up these little moments of tension that sometimes had a payoff and sometimes left you wanting something to happen, but didn't. And I, I think that's a good thing though. Set design was great. And there was an excellent use of color because the main, like the main setting of the film is this one little apartment. And I, well, I don't know if it's a little, cause it's kind of like this C shaped apartment where you could see like, your bathroom from a different window. You can look right into the bathroom. It, it was a little weird at first. It was kind of jarring until you figured out, okay, it's a, it's a C-shaped apartment, which was weird. Maybe they have that in Spain. I don't know. But not only the use of color, but the use of light and shadow had a great effect on the film. Uh, the creature that Veronica summoned by accident was super creepy and it used it played on shadows to kind of move around the house and then it got even creepier when it took on its physical form so aesthetically the film was great it had all of the 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 technical things there it had all the things to be a great film until the story comes along so the story there isn't a whole lot to it Basically, uh, as I said, the girls, they played the Ouija board during the total eclipse, during a, a solar eclipse, I'm sorry, during a solar eclipse. And supposedly this is a time where the Mayas did sacrifices and bad things can happen. So they decided to play it at that moment and they brought something through. She wanted to talk to her dad, as most people do who play Ouija boards. They want to talk to a family member. So she wanted to talk to her dad, but instead of her dad, she brought something else through, and this thing terrorizes her throughout the film. The one good thing about it is that there is not a whole lot of exposition. So a lot of times, and I've mentioned, I've talked about this on the show before, when you have a horror film, they always take the time to explain what the ghost is, how it came to be, who it was previously, things like that, stuff you don't really care about. For me, I think what is really scary or what is truly scary is the unknown. You know, people are terrified of cancer because they don't really understand it. They don't know why they get it. They don't know why it happens to them. That's what makes it scary. Once you know what something is, once you fully understand it, it's no longer scary. And I think a lot of horror films do that too often and they don't become scary anymore. This never really explains anything and it's, it's pretty spooky. However, I do not think it is as scary as these people on Twitter claim it is. I don't know who these people are and how experienced they are with horror films or watching horror films or how many horror films they've watched in their lifetime. It's not that scary. Wreck was scarier than this. The Mike Flanagan film I reviewed a couple weeks ago, Before I Wake, was scarier than this. Every film in the Insidious series is scarier than this, and those actually aren't that scary either. Uh, Annabelle Creation, The Conjuring, The Conjuring. All these films are scary. This film isn't that scary, but it's pretty creepy. And it has a lot of suspenseful moments, but that's about it. Uh, I I don't know why it got so much weird hype. Uh, at the time the article was, w this article was written, uh, the film did have a 100 on Rotten Tomatoes. And as of today, uh, March the 7th, it has a 93% with an audience score of 48 so there's a mixed bag. Now, I don't really trust uh, Rotten Tomatoes a whole lot. I normally go by IMDb, and it has a 6.4. And I think 
I think that is low. I mean, I would give this film at least a 7.5 out of 10. Or for, for my scale, I usually go out of five. Um, I would probably give this like a four and a half out of five. It's a great film. I highly recommend it. I just don't know why it got so much hype about it being so terrifying because it really wasn't that scary. I watched this last night alone in the dark. Not that scary. Definitely creepy though. Uh, if you are, if you know somebody who isn't like a big horror movie fan or they don't watch horror all the time like we do, like like us die hard horror fans, they'll probably get a kick out of it. But I don't, I don't think they're going to be as scared as these people on Twitter. I don't, I think, I wonder if these, no, 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 these people couldn't have been paid. <laughs> uh, that's kind of what I thought at first. These people must have been paid to, to tweet this stuff because it's not that bad. Uh, I do want to say though, the ending, however, kind of fell apart for me. I didn't really enjoy it that much. I, I thought it was great all the way until then. It's like, okay, now. Just to kind of satisfy mainstream audiences, we have to throw some exposition in there, and it just didn't make a whole lot of sense and fell apart. I, I think they could have just left it alone without us having to know what happened because the ending, it was like, really, this, this is this is the, the ending, huh? That part was a little disappointing. That's why I didn't get a five or, or higher than a four and a half from me uh, it was just the ending. So, again, it's a great film, and I do recommend that you go and check it out. It's only an hour and a half long. Uh, again, if you like Paco Plaza, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy this film a whole lot, so check it out. That is Veronica on Netflix. So let's move on to what's new on streaming as of February the 27th. Because I'm trying to have, I'm, I'm making up for, for missing last week. So first up on Netflix, now normally I use a site called what's new on Netflix.com. And uh, I go to the to the American section uh, where they used to keep up with this pretty well. Uh, but now it's gotten inaccurate. They've put things on there that actually aren't on Netflix. I don't know what they're doing over there, but it, it's kind of become unreliable. So I'm, I'm just having to go to Netflix and, and look to see if I see something uh, different. If you know of a website that keeps track of of New Netflix releases, please let me know on Twitter at James Gass or uh, send me an email. Go to screenpod.com slash contact and just send me an email that way or or hit me up on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, let me know. But for what I've found so far, uh, there's Veronica, which I just reviewed. Jeepers Creepers 3. I've heard mixed reviews about this. I do want to watch it though. Uh, the Frankenstein Chronicles, which is a new show starring Sean Bean. Uh, I read a synopsis. I don't know if I'm going to watch this or not. I might. Uh, Night World starring Jason Landon. This looks kind of interesting. We'll see. Uh, and The Rift. And on Amazon, there's a few films that are notable that I did want to mention. Uh, the Canal, which is an Irish horror film. So I think I talked about this film on a previous or on one of the previous episodes of Screamstream, but I don't think I actually did a full review but I think I didn't mention it. Uh, and it's an all right film. It, the ending was, was rather disappointing, but the rest of it was all right. Uh, so uh, also the season of season of the witch from George Romero is up there now. A great film, uh, non zombie film from George Romero, uh, open windows. I'm not sure what that is. Um, uh, I know it's uh, it stars uh, Elijah Wood, who actually does, who actually has a production company that does horror films. I did not realize that. I do plan on watching this uh, just to kind of see see you know what it's all about. And then we also have the Institute with James Franco. Now I've seen him pop up in quite a few horror films lately. Nothing really advertised, but he has been doing some some horror films under the radar. It's it's really weird. So I know he was in the Vault, which is on Netflix, and then I saw him. Uh, in this, I didn't actually see the movie, but I saw that he was in this. So I might watch those and, and check them out and see what's going on with them. Uh, and then finally, Like Me. Is it Like like Me or Like Me? E either way, <laughs> I've seen this hyped up a little bit on Twitter. It looks interesting from what I've seen, so I might give it a shot. And then finally on Shudder, while I don't have my Shudder subscription anymore, uh, I can see what the new releases are. And so we have two from Dario Argento, 
Uh, Tenebrae and Phenomena, I think both of those are also on Amazon Prime. Uh, great films from Dario Argento from his earlier work. Uh, we have Night of Something Strange, Dead Body, The Descent, and The Descent 2. If you haven't seen those, just watch those. Great, great films. Uh, the la- last one's out, and The Children. I don't know if The Children is a remake of the one from like the uh, 79 or 80. It could be. I don't know. I might check that out and see. I think that's also on Amazon Prime. So there you go. There are your new releases of the week. Uh, and that's going to do it for this week's episode of Scream Stream. If you'd like to keep up, keep up with me outside the podcast, you can do so at ScreamPod. Dot com where you can find links to all of my social profiles. Subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher and get the show notes for each episode. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at James Gass. Uh, and my Instagram is also at James Gass. You can check me out over there. And if you, if you have a movie that you'd like me to review or you just want to hear my thoughts on, uh, hit me up on Twitter or you can send me an email by going to screenpod.com slash contact. Uh, send me an email through the website. And let me know what you want me to review because sometimes it does get daunting trying to pick a film to, to review for the show. And lastly, music used for Scream Stream was created by Kevin McLeod over at Copitech.com. Until next week, I'm James Gass saying if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. Good night.